Okay, hey everyone. So I'm gonna, this is an update video for the train algorithm. And uh, I'm gonna start telling you the update from like present day and then go backwards. So uh, I tried a bunch of things and the best version so far is a scrambler that just spits out scrambles. If the scramble is above 27 moves, it discards it. So it only keeps 26 moves and below. And compare that to the two phase algorithm that generates like the two phase random generator. Um, and I'm going to imply that you watched my last video about the theory. This is going to be a theory video. Um, compare that to the old one, which like you would see between like 19 and 21, and then sometimes 17 and 18 move scrambles, but those are rare. Most likely, if you're going to get a scramble from the random state scrambler, it's going to come around 20. Um, and I thought to myself, 25 and below, that's not too bad, 26. I think I kept 26. Um, because if it's ergonomic and you know that certain moves don't appear until certain points, maybe you can make up the time difference of five moves. So like if you have five TPS, it would be the same amount of time. If you had six TPS, it would be even more and it would scale with your TPS. Um, but if you have low TPS, it would actually lead to a longer scramble. Um, that's one of the factors that was really bad. Um, but then I thought to myself, there's more creative tricks that we can do. If we use RUD only, and then have like brackets around the U and the D moves and then have R2, it's like square one notation. I think someone in the comments of the last video mentioned that. Um, and I was like, that's right, that would be a good thing for RUD. And like, if you write the notation like that, it's easier to read too. But then I ran into the next problem and it was like, after you finished that pest section of it, it's really fast, but like double moves are awkward. So like D2 U, um, U prime, D prime, that one's annoying for me because I would mix it up with U D. Um, it's, it was nice if it was U D prime or like the other way, U prime D, but like there are certain combinations that are bad. And the next thing I noticed is when it's, when you make it too ergonomic, your fingers move way faster than your eyes. So like, uh, I don't know if people are like music oriented, but like reading music, you have to look a little bit ahead and like reading the scramble. If you're used to like the old random, random state scramblers, you can actually like look ahead and your hands are slow enough that you can plan out the finger tricks. But like when the scramble is really ergonomic, your fingers just go really fast and your eyes have to keep up and then you make pauses. And just like in a speed solve, pauses are bad. And oftentimes the limiting factor of my hands and my eyes, it didn't lead to a better time. So um, that was the current day scramble. I made um, a bunch of these scrambles a random state, discarded if it was longer, RUD move space, and it was still a second slower than the two-phase Kosciemba algorithm. That's even with the ergonomics, even with the cheeky little tricks with putting it in a better notation so that you could do two moves at once, so it's like almost one move, because U and D prime can be executed as one move. That didn't work. So um, after this point, I'm going to go backwards in time and just continuously tell you things that didn't work. Um, so I meant I read a comment on YouTube on my last video about how like he tried the same thing a few years ago and the average moves um, Were bad in the last phase and when you remove moves down that move account only goes up so like with two gen it, He said it was 18 Yeah, it, I, I had some two gen scrambles that were in the 32 range like 29 to 32 That's really bad. That was really 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 bad um, and then I tried something else that was like intelligent. So I was like, if you can't use these move spaces, what if you just take the Kosciemba algorithm and make it more ergonomics? So like, what if you just don't have L2 in phase two and that would make move count go up by like two or three, two point something in, on average. And then on the left, like in phase one, make it so like, if you split phase one into two phases, it's easy because in the initial phases, you have a lot more degrees of freedom and like, it doesn't matter as much. So I tried that where the initial phase would orient and place two arbitrary edges in the slice, not slice, the E layer, and then uh, orient all the corners, do the E layer. It came out to around like, um, I don't have my pieces of paper with me, but it was like 11 or 14. I think 15 would be the highest number, but I had a number for it. Um, and that was pretty nice if I could just get like a 10 mover. This, these are all average numbers. So like with averages, you might get a low number, you might get a high number. Um, and these are like bounds too. Um, I was I was optimistic, but 
that didn't work either. So that's that's taking into mind that like even removing L2 and left moves from this from the total solution, the solution was still longer. It wasn't as ergonomic, so like I didn't even get the ergonomics. It was just a bad compromise. Uh, the move count was a little lower, but like when you're dealing with multiple B2, F2, L2, B2, F2, R2 moves scattered, you might as well just use the two phase algorithm. And even using the discarding trick, so like since it's an average, you can just repeatedly go and find all the random states that are nice. So like if there are two, there, I have some of these numbers memorized because I've been working with them so much. If you have like uh, two million scrambles, two million phases at like two gen depth 13 or something, I think it was 13 or 12. Maybe I don't have these numbers memorized as well. But like there are millions of states, I think six million states of two gen that are like 12 and behind, then there should be in theory millions of, t of random state scrambles that fit in that space that are below a certain move count threshold. And if you just discard everything above that, it would still, you would still have random state scrambles. And there's no way a person can go through all of these millions of states in their whole lifetime. Maybe. Uh, there's some freaks out there who solve really, really fast. But despite that, the move difference of five moves is still really big. Like, you need to have six TPS or higher and have perfect look ahead, reading the scrambles if you move ahead. And that was frustrating. And then moving a step back from that, I tried um, just pure RUF, um, RUD, both of those weren't as good. And the funny thing was the average move count of like the end state, and this is like, this isn't with math, this is like with generating tens of thousands of scrambling sequences. Like the average of move counts of RUD and, R and 2gen were like only off by like one or two moves, which is really weird to me. I thought it would be a way bigger difference. Um, but yeah, um, so I tried all of these things. I tried something else that my boss suggested. He was like, what if there were a few sequences that were easy to memorize and you generated them before the scramble? And I tried that and it didn't make a move difference at all. Like it doesn't make a difference between going to, s it actually made the difference bigger. So going from a semi scrambled state and then going to solve state, you're both, it's hard to describe, but no matter what state you give into the cube and the and then the program will solve to that state, it still has to go through the different phases. So phase one, phase two, maybe phase three, depending on how you approach it. And then all the moves you added to get to that state, it just makes it longer. So <sighs> I've tried making the phases more ergonomic, limiting the moves, but like the more limits you put, the farther you go from optimality. And I can see why no one optimized it yet because it would take something way more advanced than I can think of to optimize it. Um, yeah, I even thinking about like normal algorithms like for speed, certain algorithms like certain ZBLLs are like 11, like not even 11, like I, I'm trying to remember, it's been a few years, but when I was generating ZBLLs, optimal ZBLLs can be like really, really, really short but then like the ZBLL in practice is like 17, 18 or plus more moves in RUF move space just because it flows nice. And even though people can execute that faster, it's because they've memorized the sequence and practiced it. But when you're doing with raw scrambles, that factor doesn't of ergonomics doesn't matter as much. Ergonomics doesn't matter as much if you don't have the sequence already in your head. I also like tried like writing out, not writing out, <laughs> getting all the sequences in a Word document and then adding brackets around the common triggers. So like R U R prime, R2 U prime, R2 U prime. And like that would help look ahead, but it still didn't help the overall sequence. So let me get some actual numbers for you. I did an average of 50 with the first. I did an average of 50 with normal scrambles. Let me see. And I got 5.6 second average for scrambling, just scrambling with normal TNT's algorithm. For RUD, trunk, not truncated, uh, for the scrambles that were discarded if they were above 25, 26, so that includes 25, um, 
I got a 6.4 second average. Oh, that's that's actually worse than I thought. That's a that's a 0.8 second difference. That's almost a whole second, and that's me scrambling at like um, approximately four to five moves turns per second. So uh, that's a bummer, but I'm gonna work on other projects t now. Um, hopefully, get some stuff out. Um, but yep, I hope you liked a little bit of puzzle theory. If you like computer science and stuff, but I'm going to keep sticking to it. Hopefully we can make some more cool things for you guys. So um, that's the update, and I'll probably make the Disappearing Cube video soon, but some parts of it had like irresponsible stuff, and I probably shouldn't put that on the internet, but um, we'll see. So see y'all in the next video.